G'day guys, Tom here from Different Drop with another great mate, lots of great mates popping in at the moment, Jasper Button from Commune of Buttons in the basket range of the Adelaide Hills. Um, g'day Jasper, how are you mate? I'm good, thanks. Yeah. Um, we've been working uh, with Jasper for a long time now and uh, always been massive fans of, of what he's doing from his family vineyard there uh, in this idyllic corner of the Adelaide Hills, um, making some, some really delicious, expressive, pure... Um, you know, call them natural wines, or, but really just gorgeous wines in general, and and um, we're, we're massive fans. So, um, Jasper, I guess for those that don't know that much about about your brand, can you give us a quick background about about how it came to be? Uh, yeah, sure. So, um, Commune Buttons started uh, oh, thirty years ago, really, in in lots of ways. My my parents um, bought a old cabbage farm in in Basket Range with uh, two other families. Uh, they planted Pinot Noir and Chardonnay um, in those first, uh, well, 91, 92, 93. Um, and, you know, from that, they, they, they looked after the vines, they grew the, they grew the grapes, they, they sold the grapes, and that was uh, right up until about 10 years ago when my um, sister and I um, got back from uh, travelling overseas. Um, and we wanted to rejuvenate or reinvent the um, the farm and, and you know bring it into a, like a, another phase of existence. Um, and you know we, we met uh, people like uh, Tara Sakota and uh, Anton von Klopper and uh, James Erskine. They were making wine in the area at the time. Um, and you know we really loved the wines that they were uh, making. They were they were something that was um, quite immediate, you know, fresh, juicy. You know, fruit forward, easy, easy going style. Um, it was new. It, it was exciting. Um, and you know, I I just had an immediate affinity to to those kinds of wines. And um, you know, we we made a little bit of wine um, on the on the farm. You know, in the first couple of years when we got back, um, just just for fun, uh, really, just a couple of barrels of the Chardonnay, and. Um, you know, friendship sort of started. They were they were buying our fruit, like um, and Karis and Anton, and um, yeah, it just sort of snowballed um, year, year on year. Um, and then, you know, coming to Buttons, uh, two thousand and fourteen, we sort of put our first actual labels um, on onto bottles of wine, um, and you know, very small quantities, uh, and very much just sort of filled filled our bags with with the wines and, and took them around and showed people, and you know. It was it was funny. They they bought them and we. And, I remember, and, I remember and those again. early days. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. hair was a bit longer. Exactly. No, that's right. The hair was longer. It was a much more sort of laid back sort of uh, um, energy. And I reckon it was rootstock. Maybe I might have met you, you and Sophie for the first time. Yeah. Um, what? Well, yeah, fourteen or fifteen. So yeah, two thousand fifteen. So that was a really sort of important event for us. Actually, we 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 brought out wines to the uh, to the tasting, um, really not knowing a lot at that point you know had had some really lovely sort of friends in in the um in the game um and yeah you know uh noma was uh doing their restaurant pop-up um at barangaroo and uh you know they, they they ended up buying our chardonnay for that and and that became this real kind of game changer i guess for uh for our for our brand and um, yeah, really began our our story. Yeah. How cool! Because commune of buttons, right? It's a very cute name, but you, you need to understand, I guess, what it actually means to say that. Because when I went and visited you last year in the hills, and I was going to hang out with Jasper, he said, "Why don't you come to the farm and I'll show you around?" I said, "Okay, cool." He goes, "The address is here," and I go, "I can't see like actually a building here." You think about like most wineries on the side of some nice big road with a big fancy fucking driveway, and you know big thing like no it's just some like random driveway it looks like you're going into the abyss yeah and i'm going down there but the phone reception dies yeah and no phone reception you're winding down this driveway for what feels like kilometers yeah um this gravelly kind of off-road thing and then i found a house finally and i knocked on the front door and there's no one there and i called jasper and i'm like mate are you around i oh, know it's my parents place yeah keep going keep, keep going. going go further That's into right. the abyss and I go around the corner and then I went down the wrong road and found the winery. Yeah. Came back up the hill, found another house, and you're like, no, no, that's my sister's place. <laughs> keep going, keep going. And then further, then it's your place that's with, right, with yeah. the family. And, and it's a beautiful spot because the house is right there sitting on top of the vineyard. Yeah. And had lunch looking over the, the vines there, and, and it's yeah. just gorgeous. It's I right. mean, one, one of the nice things about Basket Range, where we live, and all, well, actually all of the winemaking, I mean, there's, there's so many, uh, in fact, you know, we, we all live at the end of a 
at the end of a dirt road, you yeah. know, like a, a, a long winding dirt yeah, road. Yeah, sure, Gareth down the road's the same, right? Uh, yeah. Gentle folk, um, you know, Anton, um, even, even Karis, you know, Coat of Barrels, yeah, it's, they're, these, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's Basket Range. It's, well, it's uh, the nature of the region because it's so thickly, it's so dense with, like, bush. Forest, and there's, forest, there's, right? there's yeah. stringing bark forest, very steep hills. Yeah. The vineyards are often hidden. So beautiful. They're, they're often, you know, on, on different aspects. They're often very small. Um, yeah, and, and wineries are often just, you know, sheds on, yeah. uh, on the, perched on the side of a hill somewhere. Um, and yeah, that's that's always been part of the charm of the of the region. And I think that's what brings people to the to the region and makes them so excited for um, starting their own little thing. You know, yeah. uh, because it's it is it's very nice to sort of live at the end of a. Um, you know, and, and a, a, a one-way street. Yeah, you know, it's humble cut, but, cut beautiful, the but beautiful yeah. and you've got your own little pocket there and you do feel like when you're at your vineyard, you do feel like there's no one else on earth. Yeah. You're just there in the site in the middle of the forest yeah. with yeah. your family. It's gorgeous. Yeah, Mate, right. you mentioned yeah. Chardonnay. So yeah. Chardonnay is what um, kind of kick-started things. And the first two wines we're here are Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. So just very quickly, we're looking at the, the 2022 Basket Town Chardonnay, which yeah. I guess is your kind of village style I guess yeah. for want of a better word. Yeah, so we basically have um four uh Chardonnay vineyards that we um that we source fruit from. So yeah. we have our own our own vines. We have a hectare and a half so planted in, in basket range. Um then I lease another hectare the yeah. the Urilla vineyard um in, in Piccadilly Valley, um in the actual valley itself on Gully Road. And then um Dave Freshly manages uh two two vineyards, um a very old um, vineyard um, right in the heart of the valley, and then his own vineyard at the top of the um, at the top of the valley. So um, you know, so very distinct, very unique sites. Um, and so those those source blocks, we we make this wine um, as a as a blend of some or all of those um, all, all those blocks um, every year. And you know, the idea with it is that you you know you we blend it in spring. Um, it's designed to be um, something that has balance that and 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 really represent what the vintage has sort of given us for that for and that you year. see that in the 22s it's just such a pure fruited kind of vintage pure fruit. lovely natural acid but but ripeness and generosity too yeah um yeah so 22 uh cool dry year no rush to pick anything um very much um for, for the growing season anyway um you know very clean fruit um and yeah i think you know we could get the um, the grapes right, and um, you, so there is a fruit generosity there. But as you say, there's that um, um, natural acidity, that acid spine that just runs uh, through all the wines for 2020. It's a really special year for us. Yeah. Yeah. Great. No, I, I mm. think the wines are fantastic, and there's a little bit of the struck match reduction. Yeah. To, to which I think is a bit of a hallmark of your Chardonnay. Yeah, for sure. Um, which adds that extra complexity. Um, but I think it's worth just like pausing on just like the the purity here, like. You're making these wines, um, you know, in a, in a kind of lo-fi manner. There's not, you know, the wild yeast, you know, unfiltered, yep. filtered, mm -hmm. I assume, mm -hmm. um, and and very little additions, if mm -hmm. any, in the wines. And but there's just like a, a purity and a brightness to the wines that I think has like improved and evolved over yep. the years with your wine making, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we we do spend a lot of time uh, working in the vines. I, I really do feel that. You know, to, to make good wines, the, the vineyard has to be in a in a particular or run in a particular yeah. way. It, it, the amount of love that you put into it is the love that you get back. Um, and so, you know, when we're making wines, we really want to make something that um, reflects a, a site. Uh, you know, the, the the attention to detail that we yeah. have in the vineyard. Um, you know, and one, once we get into the wine making, um, you know, I really want that to sort of come through. Um, so, you know, the less we do. Um, in you know in the in the time between um, you know pressing and 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 putting it into bottle I think uh, the better. Um, there's a few things that you do need to do to to guide it through and stylistically of course you're you're always looking for something um, you know in particular and so you know we have this uh, what do you say um, you know this this balance act between you know not doing too much but doing just enough to, yeah. to and I think that's the art of uh, that's the art of wine making for, yeah. for us yeah yeah. yeah. We, we we want it to have this purity and with purity it comes um you know keeping it all together uh, but then you know obviously you need to um intervene at certain stages just yeah to, well because you can to, say bring it to the you land. can say we're just 
fully hands off, I'm not going to do anything, we just want the grapes to be expressive. But if they don't have that kind of deliciousness and purity and cleanliness to them, then then you're not going to be able to drink them and they're not really expressing what you want them to express. Exactly. Whereas, you know, they're not, they're, the vines aren't growing wildly out in the bush. Like, That's you know, exactly right. into them in nice rows and, yeah. and whatever. So there is intervention, and, but minimal. And I yeah. think that's the trick. It's same in the winery. What I think you're doing with these wines is like doing just enough mm. to, to keep the wines gorgeous and smashable, but also they speak of where they come from. Exactly, exactly. Yep, that's that's really our uh, yeah, cool. That's really our goal. So speaking yeah. of where they come from, we're just between that here, um, this is off. This is uh, the 2022 macerated Chardonnay, and this is off your vineyard. Yes. So again, gorgeous, gorgeous site. Um, how old are the Chardonnay vines in 25, 30 years? Yeah. So the oldest ones are uh, close enough to 32 years, I think now. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it's um, they're, they're they're getting up there, you know. Um, and that's nice. I mean, they're sort of like teenagers for for, for yeah. vines. Vines sort of. Uh, quite happily will grow to sort of 60 to 80 years um so they're, they're sort of adolescent vines they're on a lovely but, lovely but very mature lovely <laughs> slope there too what direction are the it's a slope facing I can't yeah so like for for the chardonnay there's a it's an amphitheater so it's it goes from sort of northeast to sort of southwest facing yeah if that makes sense um and yeah um so it's it's and, and what's nice about that there's a creek that runs next door to the vineyard and, and that amphitheater actually captures the cool air. So in the daytime we have warm temperatures, but in the night uh, those temperatures come down from the from the flow of the creek, um, and then that cool air is caught in in, in the amphitheater for um, for for the morning. And so it takes a long time for it to warm up um, in the summertime. Um, so that diurnal shift gives mm. us what we can. Um, you know, gives us really good growing conditions for. for yeah, where they have they have like a. A playfulness and a generosity to the wines, or a cuddliness, but then there's yep. sort of this acidity, yep. this kind of you know zippy acid as yep. well, and that's that's a really good balance. Yeah. So this is, you described this before as like almost like a beginner's orange wine in a way. Yeah. Like it's not it's not orange, but there's a yeah. little bit of skin contact there. Yes. Stylistically, um, just like with red wines, you have different different groups of of orange wines of skin contact um, white wines. Um, and you know, as as you go along, you, you drink, you try styles, you try to understand what will work for your particular site. Um, and you know, looking at this wine, you know, we we sort of taken steps to make something that's light and juicy that you know holds onto the the aromatics of uh, of Chardonnay um, that you know has um, mouthful and texture from the tannin and the extraction. But you can still distinctly see that it is from a Chardonnay grape. It's still got stone fruits. It's still got um, you know, uh, a lot of the, the, the spectrum that you would expect from Chardonnay. So, um, yeah, and that's the way I like to drink orange wines, that, you know, that, that are easy drinking, but that have texture and mouthfeel. Um, yeah. And, you know, that's that's sort of our direction for... for you had a lot of, I remember we shared a lot of Jura Chardonnay yeah. when we had lunch yeah. at your place. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not saying it's Jura, but like it's... In, along that line of like, no, it's Chardonnay first yeah. and foremost, it's Chardonnay from a place, yeah. but then you've got this kind of extra texture, yeah. extra yeah. phenolic kind of elements to yeah. it, which just add interest. That's yeah, no, that's right. Cool. I mean, and that's that's what I find interesting about, you know, making um, making wines the way we're not prescribing to the conventions of, you know, classic, you know, wine making approaches for something like this, the Chardonnay. So. You know, put, putting it on skins, but not just putting it on skins and forgetting about it as an experiment or something. It's it's more, you know, directionally. We're like, okay, we want to make a macerated wine. Um, you know, what style do we want to make it in, and how are we going to get there with the fruit yeah. we have? You know, and yeah. and so you know, there's decisions made the whole way along. Um, you know, to keep keep the freshness in there, to keep the complexity of you know that aromatics, and but also give this sort of lovely sort of tea. Um, Kind of tannin that, mm. that sort of runs runs through the wine, which I find particularly attractive about like those orange wines. They sort of like um, almost yeah these sort of black tea mm. um, sort of like lines of tannin. Um, really like fine, fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that's and Chardonnay. I think it's like a really underrated variety for skin. Like wine, yeah, it's, it's actually I find it very difficult actually. Like um, you can you can you can make 
um, skin contact Chardonnay that is such a fun drink. That is not um, not particularly exciting. Um, you have to be very careful with uh, some of the um, the phenolics, sort of the oxidized phenols that come um, from uh, from from leaving it too long, from getting too much extraction, from giving too much oxygen into the into the ferment. So you know, keep, keeping it in this this little spot here, that's. Um, that's that's where we want to stay. Yeah, so. and that's mm. that's drinking beautifully right now. Yeah. Really fun. If you love Chardonnay, you'll dig that. If you love yeah. skin contact white wines, yeah. you'll dig that. That's, yeah. that's great drinking. Yeah. Uh, mate, Pinot, Gloria. Yeah. Another another wine off your site there. Um, and, and Gloria is, is remind me who Gloria is. Gloria yeah, so Gloria, Gloria, yeah, no, my mum my, my, my mum called the vineyard Gloria. She, she called Gloria. She, she, she um, named after herself, I presume. No, no, not after herself. I think uh, we used to have an old John Deere tractor and I think she, you know, she knows the Rolling Stones and I think she used to sing that on the tractor when she was um, slashing it, you know, when uh, when we first kind of started out. So the name kind of stuck from sure. that, um, from that uh, little uh, moment in time. Um, but yeah, a Pinot. Um, it, it's a hectare, it's east facing, um, you know, our soils, we have these ancient sort of clay soils um, that sort of these sort of sandstone bedrock, um, red clay, quartz, ironstone um, and, and schist. Uh, so like full of minerality, but very old, very sort of nutrient poor in, in, in lots of ways. Um, you know, the, the vigor of the vines isn't, isn't crazy. Um, and, you know, I think it speaks to this one particularly in our, stylistically how we're, we're evolving um, in our approach um, where we can actually start to see the influence of the soil in, in, in the winemaking. So that sort of iron, irony kind of uh, minerality that we find in this is, you know, speaking to those, those sort of sandstone um, uh, and red clay soil. So it's yeah, cool. but then mm. I, I find a lot of, you know, clay, um, red wine, Pinot and clay has mm. this, also this like openness perfume wise yeah. as well. Which yeah, yeah, for sure. And yeah. you see that in this wine, like, it really jumps out of the glass. And you were talking about the winemaking has evolved over the last few years. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, you know, when we started, um, and for, for years we were looking at using a, a lot of whole bunch, um, you know, impressed by, um, you know, winemakers from, uh, from France, uh, you know, Burgundy, um, you know, Beaujolais, you know, a whole bunch vinification, you know, you just love these wines. But we, we found as time has gone on um, for, for our soils, for our, uh, for our sites, that the, the whole bunches don't work as, as well. Um, so we've scaled that right back and um, we, we distem the fruit, but then we have these very cool, very long fermentations in the wine. So we're still achieving these, these semi-carbonic um, conditions mm -hmm. and with, with, with very gentle extraction um, and whole berries. Without the bunch influence. Without, without the bunchiness, um, without the issues of pH and, 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 and green green tannins from well, you see that this like that is like pure so pure it's yeah just like you've just got like a little pinot berry and it's yeah. just juicy and yeah. it just explodes like there's no greenness there's no stalkiness yeah. there's little kind of earthiness it's just this gorgeously pure open yeah style and i think you know one of the great pleasures of of being a, a winemaker is trying trying um the wine <coughs> just after it's been pressed, um, when it's ready to, or when it's just before it's ready to press, um, and, and tasting this, this absolute purity. And um, what we're trying to do with our wine making is actually capture that purity and, and, and bottle that lightning. Um, yeah, cool. And so, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely what we're sort of, the, the direction we, we try to go in. And if, if, I can, if I can replicate that feeling, that taste, that, that sort of structure of, of, um, of the ferment, it's um yeah that's uh that's um that's half my job done. So good tannin too though right? It's yeah. got some nice nice grip there as well. Yeah. Um yeah. really for, for the type of pinot that I love like that's mm. I want purity I like light light body light to medium body I don't like yeah. ballsy pinot. Yeah. Sometimes those Adelaide Hills pinots can get a bit dry ready. Yeah. You know? a bit overripe mm. and a bit too much oak or a bit too much bunch. That's just you've really captured like. The, the, the grape and the vineyard and it's got this lovely energy about it. Yeah, yeah, I think, um, yeah, and that's been, a, a, once again, a change in, uh, in approach in, in, the, in the sort of philosophies that we're sort of trying to um, get to um, with, with, our, with our wine making. I think, you know, natural acidity is really important for, for modern, modern wines. Um, you know, that, 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 that vibrancy and that energy that you get from, 
um, natural acidity. I mean, you can't beat it and you, you can't replicate it and you can't make additions to, um, you know, uh, cover your tracks. You know, you, you, yeah. you, you need to pick on the right time. Um, that is like the biggest and most important um, aspect of, of vintage is making sure you nail the picking date. Energy energy is the word, hey? Like, I know that sounds a bit, it sounds a strange adjective to a, to a wine, but I remember Taris always spoke about energy. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in wines, you, you always wanted the wines to to walk this tightrope yep. of ripeness, yep. where they're they're just barely ripe. And, and I'm not saying this is what this is, but it's all about the wines having this energy when mm. you're drinking them. They just yeah. like bounce on the palate, yeah. and you want more. And yeah. they, they ask you questions, and, and, yeah. and that does that. I mean, yeah, yeah. I think um, you know, there's there's things that you you want to achieve with your wines, and I think one of them um, is absolutely that 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 idea where you want to keep going back to the glass and, and, and trying to find out a little bit more, you know, every, every time you taste it and um, try and understand it and, and also see the wine evolve, you know, from the beginning to the end of the bottle and, you know, the bottle's slippery, so it's, yeah. it's gone um, and the last sip's the best, that would be, you know. That would be very slippery. Yeah, so that's, right. that's, definitely our, um, that's definitely our... Speaking of slippery, game. Yeah. slippery Syrah, yeah. I guess we have to taste Shiraz. Yeah, yeah. Not really Shiraz though, is it? Like, no, not your classic this Shiraz. This is not your classic Shiraz. So, uh, the 2022 Mylar Mylo, uh, Syrah, uh, very deliberately named Syrah, I imagine. And, yeah. and so Mylar, just like a neighbouring kind of... Yeah, so, so the Piccadilly Valley is uh, at Mount Lofty, in a, just south, uh, sorry, directly east of Adelaide. And then south of the Piccadilly Valley, um, we have the Onkaparinga River, which runs down through uh, Bluett Springs and mm -hmm. into um, uh, the Sea at... No longer, um, and this um, this this Syrah is from a little town, um, Milo. So the vineyard is just outside of Milo, um, and it's in the Onkaparinga Valley. So yeah. it's um, you know alluvial, sandy sort of clay soils, um, a cool climate, um, a truly cool climate um, uh, site, um, very late ripening. Um, but yeah, so it's about twenty minutes from my house. So we work with um, a couple of growers. Um, uh, this guy's one, um, and, and you know a couple in the Piccadilly Valley, and you know we do make these little single vineyard um, wines because you know they those sites impress us, and we like uh, yeah, cool. And you know, we like to you know, make wine from them. Well, this um, and, and that's the thing about this wine, right? This isn't talking about your. This isn't about like the the button home, right? But no, this, that's but right. This is the what you love, what you love drinking and making. I, I presume, like, because this is such a it's like a light to medium bodied style of Shiraz. It's yeah. totally different to. 99.9% yeah. .9 of Australian yeah. Shiraz or Syrah. Yeah. And I love it for that because it's got this freshness and perfume yeah. uh, and brightness to it um, that is pretty unique, I reckon. Yeah, so, I mean, it's really made in a similar way uh, that we made the Pinot. So there's these little long, cool um, fermentations uh, and, you know, uh, distemmed distem fruit, early picking. So, like, both of the, the reds are only 12% alcohol. Um, but, you know, the idea is that they are light and pretty, but they still have this core, you know, this sort of brambly, darker core to them. Um, and so when you drink these kinds, of, like this Syrah, for instance, you know, it, it's velvety and mm. it's mid palate. It's 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 easy to drink, but it has this poppy, sort of lighter frame um, from all that natural sort of acidity. So, you know, it, it almost drinks like a Gamay or a, or a Pinot or something like that. But it's um, you know, it's the classic Shiraz. But right? it has, but it has like length. Like I'm, I'm still mm. tasting it now. Yeah. So it's not washy or simple. Like it's got complexity. It's got yeah. length to it. Yeah. It's got some structure there, but in this like light frame. Yeah. And again, purity is just what I'm thinking of all these wines. And 2022 was the vintage was very much like that. It was. Yeah. I, I think Jasper, that's like a big uh, evolution in these wines. Uh, and I'd say evolution, not revolution. Like this has been over yes. several years yeah, watching your sure. wine making, but there's a brightness and freshness and purity to mm. these wines that is like year on year improving. I mean, yeah, which yeah. just makes them so much fun to drink. Because I've drunk um, your Syrahs and Pinots like since the beginning. Yeah. I've always liked them. Yeah, but they used to be a bit more savoury, a yeah. bit more like um, I don't know, variable or yeah. just they were always fun, but you didn't quite know what you're going to get. Yeah. these are just like. Pure, gorgeous wine. Yeah. yeah, really yeah. good. Yeah, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah love them. Yeah. Cool. Well, mate, that's that's this is the current new releases that yeah. are available at the yeah. moment. Um, there's always new wines coming out Indeed. from from Jasper and Sophie. And um, uh, yeah. So if you're a fan of, uh, I guess the basket range, like if you you know if you 
um, cut your teeth buying like a coat of barrels and, and, and Lucy Margot and BK and things like this, um, then definitely Commune Abutments is worth checking out. But to be honest, like if you just love cool climate wines, you know, th these are the perfectly balanced, really well pitched wines um, from lovely people and, and a gorgeous site and we can't recommend them highly enough. So well done, mate. And yeah. um, exciting things to come. In the future, no doubt. Indeed. Little block down the back with some bits and pieces. Being That's planted. right. Yeah, there's plenty of irons in the fire on uh, on the farm. So uh, yeah, we're, we're not like... chasing after infants. Yeah, we're not chasing after little 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 children. Yeah, or or younger sisters. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, mate. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Right. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, thank you.